Hi, I'm glad to share our latest work on knowledge-based question answering. I'm Yugu, a PhD student from the Ohio State University, and this is joint work with my collaborators, Sue, Michelle, and Brian from Army Research Lab, Percy from Stanford University, Shifeng from UCSB, and my advisor, Yusu. At the very beginning of my presentation, I want to directly show you the three highlights of our work. So first of all, we collect and release a high-quality data set for KBQA. Second, we propose a line of baseline models, including a novel bird-based KPQA model. And based on our, our data set and baselines, we are able to conduct in-depth analysis of future directions for KPQA. So the purpose of this paper can be summarized in one sentence. We want to facilitate the research for practical knowledge-based question answering. In the following slides, I will discuss what does practical mean in KBQA and what is required for a practical KBQA model. Model knowledge bases in practice are extremely large and broad. And KBQA is a useful technique to provide an easy access to KBs for non-expert users. However, problems arise with the scale. It is difficult to collect training data covers the entire KB to train KBQ models. Because as we mentioned, KBQ uh, knowledge bases are extremely large and there are also some other issues like combinatorial explosion. So as a result, we argue that practical KBQ models should be able to generalize to unseen distributions. And this is what practical means in KBQ. Specifically, we lay out three levels of generalization in KBQA. And the first level is IID generalization, which simply means the question during test time are drawn from the same or similar distribution as training data. And the second level is compositional. In this case, uh, schema items such as the other capacity stage here, they are all seen during training. But the composition of this query is, is novel. You can see this query is never seen during training. And third level is zero shot generalization, which tries to push the non ID generalization to an extreme. So, in this case, there are also unseen schema items like TV program and program created. They do not exist in training data at all. However, existing KB create data sets, there are many, there are either focused on ID generalization or compositional generalization. And as a result, there is still not a data set can be used to evaluate all three levels comprehensively, which is critical for developing practical, practical KBQ models. So this leads to the first highlight of our work. To fill this gap, we collect and release a high quality data set that can evaluate all three levels of generalization in KBQ. So for such purpose, there are several requirements we need to meet. The first requirement is wide coverage. So such a data set should cover a lot of different relations and compositions in the KB so that we can hold out an enough data for a test set to set up the challenge for compositional or zero shot generalization. And second, it should be diverse because in reality, users might ask a lot of different questions of different natures. And of course, it should be of high quality, which means it should not contain too many mistakes or data errors. Now I will uh, briefly discuss how we achieve all those three characteristics of our crowdsourcing. So given the knowledge base, uh, we first generate some canonical logic form by randomly sample some, sampling some subgroups from it. And then we'll have a graduate student to convert such canonical logic form into canonical questions, after which we hire cloud workers to paraphrase those canonical questions. And then we re resample some groundings for this logic form. And with the combination of the sampled groundings and the sampled paraphrases, we are able to generate the final questions. So for more details, you can refer to our paper. Now let's look at some statistics of our, our data set. So first of all, it's, it, it is of wide coverage. And then it's diverse. It contains uh, questions of different complexity and different aggregation functions. We also have integer surface for mining. 
to make the interdimensions in our data set more diverse and more practical. And also the quality of our data set is pretty high. We have some strict quality control during cross-sourcing. We also conduct some manual analysis of our data set and we find that the error rate is pretty low, which is, which is, which is good. And finally, we split our data set into training and dev and test set to evaluate all three levels of generalization. Now we can move on to the second highlights of our, of our paper. So I first, first of all, I want to give you a overview of our model. So our model comprises two parts. The first part is an entity linker, which tries to identify the entities from the question. And the second part is the main part of our model, which is the many parser, which tries to map the input question onto an executable logic form. So I will focus on the semantic parser of our model because the entity linker is basically an off-the-shelf entity linker. But one thing I want you to note here is that the entity linker is a pretty strong entity linker on some other KBQ data sets. But the performance on our data set of entity linking is not that high. This is because entity linking is challenging our data set because of uh, both that we have a lot of different entities of different popularity in our data set and also because of the entity surface for mining. Now let's look at the semantic parser of our, our, our model. So our semantic parser based on sec to sec model. So we try to model the semantic parsing as a sequence transduction task, which is also very similar to machine translation if you are familiar with that. So we identify several challenges in semantic parsing for practical KPQA. The first challenge is called language ontology alignment. So because in practical KPQA, we need to consider all different scheme items in the knowledge base, and many different scheme items are pretty similar to each other. And as a result, they can, they can be very confusing to the semantic parsing model. A solution to this challenge is to have some better language understanding. For example, we can use pre-trained language model like BERT. And the second challenge is large search space. And to handle this challenge, the solution can be some effective search space planning strategies. Now let's first focus on the solution for language ontology alignment challenge. So the key idea is to enhance language understanding with BERT by providing joint encoding for the input question in the schema items. Previously, this is very straightforward for tasks like text to circle, because in text to circle, there are only a very small schema, and it is very easy for them to concatenate all schema items with the input question together and fit to BERT. However, this is not feasible in KBQA because uh, there are just too many scheme items in a modern knowledge base. And if, if we simply concatenate all of them together, this will definitely exceed the maximum length limit of pre trained model like BERT. So instead, we propose to split the scheme items into small chunks, and then we concatenate each chunk with the input question independently to get the joint encoding. So here is an overview of the architecture of our model. For more details, you can refer to our paper. And now let's talk about the solution to handle the large search space challenge. So we propose two different strategies for search space planning. The first strategy is called vocabulary planning. So recall that our model is based on sec to sec model. Vocabulary planning basically means we have some constraint vocabulary during coding instead of a global vocabulary. So for each different input, we have a different constraint vocabulary, which is um, which is derived from the topic entities identified from the input question. So we 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 use topic entities as anchor to prone the vocabulary. For example, we we only consider scheme items that are reachable within two steps by any topic entity in our experiments. And the second uh, strategy is called ranking. So in in this method. We generate candidate logic forms from the KB first, and then we use sec to sec as a scorer to rank all those candidate logic forms, instead of using it as a generator to generate the logic form by itself. So to generate the candidate logic forms from the KB, 
We enumerate candidate lots from so with up to two relations from each topic entity identified from the question. So for our experiments, uh, we consider the following models. So first of all, based on two different strategy of uh, a search space running strategy, a uh, search space running, we can have different variants of our model. The first variant is called transaction, which is basically a sec to sec model with vocabulary pruning during decoding. It corresponds to the first search space pruning strategy. And the second model is called uh, ranking, which corresponds to the second search space pruning strategy. We also uh, consider variants without BERT for both transaction and ranking, which uses GLOV for uncontextualized representation instead of using BERT. And we also consider Q QGG in our experiment. QGG is a state-of-the-art model on several existing KBQ datasets. Now we can move on to the last highlight of our work, in-depth analysis of future directions for strongly generalized for KBQ models. So first of all, by comparing the performance between transaction, transaction without BERT and ranking, ranking without BERT, we can see that BERT is very important for non-ID generalization. And then by comparing the results uh, among transaction, transaction minus without vocabulary pruning and ranking, we can also see that search space pruning is very important for non-ID generalization too. So here, transaction without vocabulary pruning is basically a naive sec to sec model. And last but not least, we observed that uh, the performance on, of QGG is not so high on our data set, which, which indicates our data set is a very challenging data set. And uh, more effort needs should be devoted to uh, developing better models on data set for the long-standing goal of achieving practical KBQA models. And based on our uh, previous discussion and analysis, we point out two future directions for developing practical KBQA models. The first direction is better way of using pre-training models in KBQA. So in this paper, we only propose a preliminary way of using BERT in KBQA. So the optimal way of of benefiting from pre-trained models in KBQA still remains to be explored. And also more intelligently guided search space running is also very important. So now the search space running strategy based on ranking is not very flexible. So there are still a great value for improvement in terms of search space running. And if you are interested in our work, you, are, you, you can check out a homepage of our data set. Um, well, this link, and also you can check out the code, including the implementations and details of all our experiments in our paper uh, on our GitHub repo. So thanks for listening. Uh, this is all about my our work.